right, the next thing we're going to try is a fuel leak test. And you're basically going to ground your jumper, as we've been doing in the previous videos. Make sure that your injectors are fixed. They use wire in this case, but make sure that your injectors are fixed to your fuel well. For this test, you don't really need to do that because it's just a leak test. As long as they're on there, you know, stuck in there real good, that's all that matters. Then you tilt your injectors to 60 degrees, turn on your fuel pump, and you should get no leaks out of here at all, period. Remove your fuel rail, and your fuel rail is only bolted down, one bolt over there, and then one bolt back here, one bolt back there, and then your entire fuel rail should come up. And if you've never removed it, there might be a zip tie going around your fuel rail that you'll have to uh, remove so that your injector harness can move with it. Before you can uh, get your injectors out, I think it's probably going to be wise to remove this because your fuel lines are going to be routed down here and you need that extra length in order to pull up on the entire harness. These two hoses connect to the fuel rail in order to have that extra free play to lift up you're going to have to remove your uh, filter box and or main intake boot because by the stock uh, way that the fuel lines are routed, I believe they go underneath. They go between the main intake boot and your resonator down there. The fuel lines actually go inside of there and you have to remove one from the other. Uh, but that's the stock routing configuration. Over the life of the car, most people will just end up putting it down over there. That way they don't have to take this off. But in order to do a running test, you have to have this installed. So every time you're doing a pressure test and you mess with your stuff, you're going to have to put your intake back in. You're going to have to take it back out, put it back in, take it back out. So get used to it. Now this is what I'm talking about here. On the stock setup, your fuel lines run back behind where this intake boot is, there's a little channel, a groove back here where your fuel lines go. But over the life of the car, most people will just set them right here in front. And either way is fine, honestly. I don't I don't see any reason why you can't do it either way. But if you're gonna be working on your car a lot, it's probably best to leave your fuel lines routed right here. And that way, in case you have to take off your main intake boot and put it back on and take it off and put it back on, uh, you don't have to go in and re or disconnect your main intake boot from your resonator every single time. And that's the only real advantage to doing it that way, or routing it that way versus the stock way. Oh. <clears throat> and actually, I did route it back that way because I like that, so I am actually going to have to unroute it that way. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. In this way, we get some free play, so when we lift up the fuel rail, we'll have all of this free play to lift up the fuel rail as, as high as we want. Whereas if they were located under here, we could only pivot the fuel rail up and down this way. But this way, with these lines in front, we can just lift up the fuel rail that way. In order to remove the fuel rail, there will be two 12 millimeter bolts attaching the fuel rail to the intake manifold. And those are on black grommets, so make sure you don't lose those grommets when you remove the fuel rail. Make sure that your injector harness is free up here so that when you go to remove your injectors, oh, you're going to have to also remove that hose off the fuel pressure regulator. Oh yeah, that's one. That's another thing is that your injector harness here is not going to flex much, so your injector harness is now going to be a pivot point. Completely forgot about that. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to give us enough free play. And that includes removing this bracket on the side to get even more free play. Alright, now that this bracket is free right here, that was holding it down, we should be able to raise it up a little bit more. Uh, something like that. this to be more than 60 degrees off. That's way more than 60 degrees. This is the system that I've come up with. It just seemed easiest to dry out water bottles in the sun. Florida sun will dry out a water bottle in about an hour. 
Uh, if you shake it out and everything, it'll just evaporate right out of the bottle. But you don't want your rail to be more than 60 degrees tilted towards you. Uh, the, the factory manual says you want it on right about 60 degrees and then you look for leaks uh, when the system is primed. So this is what it looks like. Um, let's see. It's about 60 degrees. I think that's pretty good. Not all of them are going to be exact, but it doesn't have to be exact. It just means that you need them tilted just a little bit just to check for leaks. I have my pliers resting up against it to prevent the rail from just falling back. And I think that's going to work pretty good. So now what we have to do is go jumper pin our fuel pump. And then if you want to do a volume test, which is when they're actually running, you can do that. And that's for 15 seconds. Now you don't have to relieve fuel pressure on this test. So you don't have to worry about taking out your fuel pump relay. But here I've got my uh, T-pin on my alligator clip again. And I'm going to once again go in like so. That's your fuel pump pin on your automatic 2.0. On the manual transmission, it's going to be in your diagnostic box. And then take this other side for both either automatic or manual, I4 or V6, does not matter. You ground directly to body ground. But your pin might be different depending on your engine and trans configuration. Now the next step is turn the key on and see if any of those leak with pressure not and the car not started none of those should leak and this is the leak test basically what this does is it looks for stuck open con uh, injectors if there's any injectors that are gummed up and stuck open this test will tell you that it's not going to tell you if they're stuck closed but if you have a leak uh, fuel pressure leak down uh, you're losing fuel pressure this is one of the things that you're gonna have to do to rule it out and I'm pretty sure that I've just ruled this out so our fuel pressure is holding steady at 25 same as it was the other day prior to me swapping out the fuel pressure regulator now I have the junkyard another junkyard fuel pressure regulator in here and I'm not getting any leak so what I'm gonna do is shut the car off and then check for leaks all right cars off pressure is leaking down and it's obviously not leaking out of my fuel injectors so my injectors are not the source of my leak absolutely 100 percent not the source so that's going to leave either i have another bad fuel pressure regulator or a leak in a fuel line which i do not have a leak in my fuel line because that would be obvious i would see fuel somewhere you know there's no fuel on the ground no fuel anywhere or fuel pump is not holding pressure which is another possibility could be a bad fuel pump at this stage, it's either going to be a bad fuel pump or a bad fuel pressure regulator. So we're looking at a bad fuel pressure regulator or a bad fuel pump. And there is a check valve involved with that fuel pump. We are narrowing down our suspects to now we only have two fuel pressure regulator and fuel pump. And we're going to have to do a fuel pump test. I really don't want to because it's involved and you have to jack the car up. But I got a feeling we're going to get into that one too. So this video is done. That's how you test for your leaking fuel injectors. Pretty neat.